what we tried to do is look at real things. Like when you're in a dentist chair, right, and, they, uh, and he swings that light over you, and it's like, uh, it's got like a fly in it, and the lens is like from 1979, it's all yellow and gross, and it's kind of like you feel interrogated, uh, and we ended up basing all of our, our lighting, our light fixtures, on dentist light. So for us, it was really important that when you walked into a room, you said, oh yeah, it looks a little bit different, but I recognize this as a bedroom. I recognize this as a cafeteria. You'd think that it'd be super easy to like make up a spaceship, and in a way it kind of is. But if it's like all fantasy and magic and stuff, people aren't going to believe that, that this horror stuff is going to happen and it won't really make them feel scared. It's sort of how we envision the future. You know, it's not going to be the sterile environment. It's really sort of dirty and dank. We wanted it grounded in reality, but we also needed a foundation on which to start the art. And what we chose was Gothic architecture. Now when I say that, people kind of freak out and they start to picture, like I said, like really Gothic, um, like some 14 year old drawing on a peachy, right? And he's all emo and, and you know, and he's all sullen. It's not that at all. You wouldn't even recognize it. It's not a flying church. Uh, if you look at the game right now, you might go, Where, where'd you get, where's Gothic, right? But what it did was it, it, it started with this rule set. A lot of the, the world stuff and the forms, you'll see a lot of repeating ribs and, and open supports and things that sort of evoke human body structure. And that's why Isaac has got, there's a lot of ribbing on Isaac, and there is the, the ribbing on the ship. You can really see how the gravity works in a, a Gothic uh, building, and how the weight is distributed and leads to the floor, and it feels very real, like you know how that building is held up. These people had to live on the ship too. So we thought about, you know, where would they sleep, what would they do for fun, how would they grow their food, and I think these are all the different areas that you'll see within the Ishimura. And rather than just as a set for more horror to happen, we actually thought about, okay, well then they grow food here and they package it and move it here and you'll see advertisements for that food and the drinks, the movies that are playing that week, the ones that are upcoming, and it helps establish what these people cared about and, and what they were gonna do. And then when you see what happened to them, uh, it's that much more horrific. <laughs> Gore is an important part of Dead Space, and uh, just because it's a, an important part of horror. I think we tried to hold back a little. We didn't want it to be sort of cheesy gore, where it's just gore for the sake of gore. You know, we wanted to make sure it was motivated by something. So we use the violence and the gore and the explicitness in, um, in extreme moments, like when, it, when something big has happened, or there's an important thing that we want you to feel at that moment, that's when it gets ratcheted all the way up. You know, there's kind of two different types of gore, I think, in the, in the game, and, and one is with the enemies. The necromorphs in our game have a whole ecology to them. It's not just a bunch of zombies all coming at you, and that's their only job. We wanted to make sure that they really came from people on the crew, that you could tell that they were once human, and that something sort of mutated them into what they are right now. But the key idea, the moment when everything sort of clicked for us, was when we made them relatable. And I think it's the human part that that makes you kind of like uh, feel a little bad about shooting, right? You, got, you know that used to be a human. If you look really closely at, at some of the slashers, right, you can sort of, you can still even make uh, human eye contact with a few of them, or you can recognize what their old uniform was when they were actually just a normal member of the crew, or the more grotesque ones, you could even see sort of how the human body was repurposed and, and bent and broken to make something. We named these pretty basically because we figured that, again, realistically, I'm, I'm on, this, on the Ishimura, and you know, what would happen in a war? You wouldn't give them a name. You'd go, watch those slashers, because that's what they do. And then there are the little guys we call the lurkers. Uh, my favorite is the lurker. OK, it, it's, a, it's a baby. It sounds, you know, a little bit like what? When you, when you do the, the baby thing. But there's, a, there's an energy to that when you, when you make when you see that and, and in the way they move and it, we sort of, they have this crawl when they come at you that's creepy. They're just creepy. The scariest moment is um, when you go into the baby lab. You start off and 
come into this room and it's kind of greenish and there are babies floating in this, uh, you know, sort of this, this goo. It's easy, I think, when you're dealing in that kind of subject matter to do something sort of goofy, but, um, oh no, th these, these little buggers mean business. So it was, it was key that we worked on them over and over again until they were creepy and no one was laughing. They were scared. You know, some of the people on the team are like, you're, you're pushing it, and I'm like, yeah, we're pushing. I can safely say I, I never imagined I was gonna make a game where you drop kick a baby. Who doesn't want to drop kick a baby?